This example is a little different because we're going to have kind of a kind of a nasty little graph here. This looks like, well, my drawing of this is like a sad little windmill, but it's supposed to be a pedal. So generally speaking, when you have sine of some number times theta or cosine of some number times theta, what you get is this this pedaled form. I don't really know a better, a better word for it. I think the, sorry, I'm looking down at the text here. I think it's rows curves as sometimes people use, but... I've always seen them as just, they're just drawn with petals. And, and they create really pretty graphs. I didn't, but generally they, they can if they're done correctly. And what you find is that they have this nice symmetry. When they're drawn, the, these angles where they come back to zero are really, or they're evenly distributed. They're distributed, in fact, related to dividing two pi by this number. And, um, and they're different if the number's even or odd, so you have to watch out for that. But um, we're going to see kind of how this happens, how these zeros happen, where these points are. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the area of two petals. So I could either take this one, I could take, well, let me get out of the way. I could take this one and that one. I could take this one and that one. I could take that one and this one, right, obviously, any way I want. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to pick whatever's convenient and then go from there. So to do this, what we have to do is we have to think about we have to think about this. All right, when theta is zero, so along the theta equals zero line, we see that sine of zero is zero. So that tells me that theta equals zero is kind of one of these zero points. What I really want to do is I want to find the next time it's equal to zero, the next time it gets to zero. Well, I know that generally speaking, sine of zero, sine of pi, sine of two pi, sine of three pi, sine of n pi, some number, a multiple of pi that's always equal to zero. So sine of zero is zero, but then by the next time I make it to pi, it's equal to zero. So why is that important? Well, what I want to do is I want to say, all right, what's the next time three theta is going to get to zero? When theta is zero, it's already there. I'm sorry, it's going to get some number of pi. When theta is zero, we've already, we're, we're good. We start there. But what about when theta is like pi over three? Well then, if theta is pi over three, that becomes sine of pi, so we're back to zero. So that tells me that between zero and pi over three, I get one of the petals. Now what happened, but you gotta be careful, right? Because we're going from zero to, so we go out, out, out. By the time we get to pi over six, we're actually at this little dot that I had already drawn here. And then we keep going out, keep going out, we come back to pi over three. But the next piece, when we go from pi over 3 to, for instance, when we go from there to, this is going to end up being 2 pi over 3. When we're in this region, notice that we're going backwards. We're actually going down. Does that make sense? By the time we're here, we're actually going in the negative direction. Because if I'm pointed straight up at pi over 2, r is actually in the negative direction. So. So this is actually invalid here. We can't use it there. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to set this up as, there's either two ways to do it. One is it's two separate integrals. The other is to realize that this is, that the area of two pedals is twice the area of a single pedal. We'll get there in a minute. So after pi over 3, our next case is actually, I'm sorry, our next piece Nope, it's not there, it's actually here. No, it's there, it's there. That's pi right there because that would be sine of three pi. So two pi over three to pi, we're in the positive direction because we're coming out. If you go along the line of the angle and you hit the graph, then you know that it, you're, you're going in the positive direction. So between two pi over three and pi. So there's two ways to set this up. We can set this up as two separate integrals. We can say the, let me use blue here. We can say the integral, the area is one half zero to pi over three of eight 
sine 3 theta squared d theta plus 1 half the integral from 2 pi over 3 to pi that's a perfectly fine way to do that the second thing is to realize that these now this graph may not be able to tell you that because this graph is poorly drawn but in the actual case this and this are the same now feel free to work these out separately and, and prove to yourself that they are in fact the same but I'm gonna I'm gonna operate under the assumption that you trust me here so instead of doing both of these I'm gonna double this one and just say that it's double the area like that. Now the nice part is uh, we had a one-half so when we doubled it that went away. Now we have to square this thing and solve it. So 64 sine cubed 3 theta d theta. Now what we're going to use is we're going to use a double angle identity and we're going to, because sine squareds are, are bad, we don't like them. So using the double angle identity, we get we get 32 minus 32 cosine of 6 theta d theta. At this point, we can take an antiderivative. We can get 32 theta um, minus 32 over 6, which, by the way, 32 over 6 is 16 thirds. 16 thirds sine, sine of 6 theta from 0 to pi over 3. So what's nice about this particular case is that when I plug in pi over 3 here, that becomes sine of 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0. When I plug in 0 here, sine of 0 is 0. So the sine terms don't actually matter. So we end up with 32 pi over 3. 32 pi over 3. And that's really how you do it. You just, you know, you follow the, you follow the logic. You, you plug in here. Again, you could absolutely do this separately from this. You know, it's the, you know, if you did just this one over here, you'd get 32 pi over 6. If you did just this one here, you'd get 32 pi over 6. You could add them together to get 32 pi over 3.